Welcome back, listeners. Welcome into the Flipping the Bird podcast. I'm your host, Luke Lawhorn, the current sports editor at UT State student newspaper, The Paisano. I'm excited today. We got a lot to talk about here with just two of my guys, the smallest crowd we've had this year, but I have a sneaky suspicion it could be the best episode we've had all semester. Here with Rylan and Connor. Rylan, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, it was a good slate on this weekend, so I'm ready to uh, talk about some important games that we had come up. Yeah, what's up, everyone? I'm doing good as well. Obviously, my sports teams didn't do so good, but still a great slate of games we had, so I'm looking forward to talking about it. Yes, sir, and unfortunately for Connor, we are talking about both his teams today as they both lost this past week, but there's no other team that we're going to start, start talking about aside from the UTSA Roadrunners. Um, UTSA maybe got their season back on the right track after this Saturday's win against Temple. Is their first game in the Conf- American Athletic Conference, and they won it in, you know, pretty, not necessarily dominant fashion, but pretty handedly. They won 49-34. to 34. Frank Harris bounced back game, 25 of 33, 338 yards, three touchdowns. Ryland, I'm going to start with you, my main UTSA guy. How did you feel about this uh, Saturday's game and have the Roadrunners turn the season around? You know, it was a good win, right? At first, you know, it started off a little shaky. You know, they gave up that first drive touchdown to Temple, but then they really bounced back uh, the team as a whole. I mean, the UTSA offense looked as best as they have all year, and I think that was really due to Frank Harris being back in there and being confident because when you have Frank Harris in there coming off an injury and he's kind of iffy, the offense can look a little, you know, not great. But so it was good to see Frank out there uh, stepping in the throws with that with that injured foot and uh, really just showing a lot of confidence and leading this team to a very, very important win. Yeah, I think it was a, a big bounce back performance. I, I spoke about it last week. It had to be a bounce back game for UTSA. Um, obviously, Frank Harris had a phenomenal performance. I mean, 338 yards, three TDs. He also had a rushing TD. Um, also, shout out to the running backs, though. Robert Henry, I've had a lot of praise for him since he came here. Um, 11 carries, 78 yards, two TDs. Kavorian Barnes also had a touchdown. So, honestly, pretty well-rounded offensive performance. I mean, they put 49 points up. Still concerned about the defense. That's another performance where they've given up over 30 points. So, it's a little concerning. But, overall, good bounce pack performance for the offense. So, both of y'all, do y'all do y'all both think that UTSA is like turn their season around? Like from here on out, it's you know undefeated. No, I wouldn't say that. I, I want to see a little bit more from the defense before I say that we can win out. Right now, as of right now, I wouldn't be surprised if we sh- we drop Saturday's game to UAB because UAB does have a really good offense, and you know the offense, our offense isn't always going to be able to match. Like we have to have a defense that can at least hold them to a respectable amount of points. You know, somewhere in that twenty to twenty four ish type range. Um, but so I need to see one more good game from the team before I say we're back on the, the win out season, but it's, it's looking better than it was even before the bye, obviously. Yeah. And I don't want to necessarily talk too much about the UTSA U- UAB game. Cause we'll talk about that at the end, but that'll be a good contest. Cause those games are always close. Always go down to the wire. And then after that, UTC has got a pretty soft schedule for a few weeks, at least. But you know what I did like about this Saturday's game that, well, they kind of did a lot of things. They were losing early. I mean, at one mm-hmm. point it was 14-7. Was that the largest deficit, just a touchdown? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. they. I mean, so they were trailing early, came back. Their quarterback had 472 yards, five touchdowns, and a whopping 65 passing attempts. That's insane. And Temple, they also had 10 more minutes of time of possession. And, I mean, so they had the ball a lot more than UTSA get, did. Not Obviously not to the extreme that Army. UTSA had, but it showed you that they didn't ha- even have to have the ball in, for 24 minutes and, I don't know, 50 seconds of the game. They scored 49 points, so I think that was pretty impressive. Uh, if we're focusing on the UTSA team, Rylan, you're my guy. You, you know all about this team. What would you say is their weakest spot on the team right now? Oh, for me, it's it's got to be the defensive line, man. Uh, you know, Coach Trailer talked about it a couple of times, you know, going to this game, we didn't have any turnovers because we weren't forcing any pressure. You know, quarterbacks were, you know, having all the time in the day to just do whatever they want, dissect the defense. So um, we just need – we'll try more kind of uh, nursing an ankle injury. It's going to be real tough going forward, but we need that D-line to step up because if we don't generate any pressure on the quarterback, 
We're not going to force them into runs. We're not going to force any turnovers. It starts in the trenches. You know, almost every coach, you'll, you'll ask them and they'll say, the game is won in the trenches, whether that's offensive line or defensive line. And for right now, the weakness for UTSA is what's been holding them back has been their defense, their defensive line. It's not physical enough. They're not getting enough pressure. You know, Trey Moore can't do it all by himself, uh, especially in the interior, you know, especially against Army. I mean, they were getting gashed in the interior, and they weren't bouncing it outside. They were going right up the gut. So the, the defensive line, we have the talent. They just need to, you know, get a little more, mm, like get a little angry, you know, do something. <laughs> no, I – I definitely agree. I think, honestly, the past two seasons, I thought the secondary was the weakest. I definitely think the defensive line is now. I think I've seen multiple games where they just get dominated. I mean, the Army game especially, they were just running the ball all over us. And it's just it's super concerning because, like you said, we have the talent, but they're just not being physical enough. So UTSA's got to work on just being more nasty. Like they always say, two one zero nasty. They got to get like that. Like, just you know, get the triangle. Yeah, the triangle. Man. They got to. They got to get angry. I think if they can get the defensive line going and playing like the way that I think we all know they can, I think you'll see tons of improvement. Because, like you said, the game's won in the trenches. So, and they've also, with their competition, have played discipline and you know more. Tough, quote unquote, teams with like Tennessee and Army. So of course they've been dominated. But in UAB, again, we'll touch on in a minute. They're, you know, they're pretty good in the trenches. Uh, Connor, unfortunately, we're about to have a rough, I don't know, next 10, 15 minutes for you. So if you want to walk out of the room, please feel free to do so. Because uh, we're going to switch to last Sunday night's football game. It was game of the week. I was really excited to watch it. And you know what? I should have known better because I didn't end up watching it. I had I had a long Saturday and early Sunday and came 6 p.m. I was like, I'm taking a nap. Screw this game. And I woke up to a score of 42 to 10. So we have a lot to talk about, Rylan. Um, Dallas, San Francisco was supposed to be a great game. Two teams that, you know, them two plus the Eagles, the forefront of the NFC. Now with the Cowboys after these first five weeks of the season, a lot of question marks. So Rylan, does Sunday night's football game say more about Dallas or the San Francisco 49ers? I think it says more about the Niners. I mean, it's just a lot of people, I don't know who, but we're doubting their quarterback and because uh, it was all going to depend on their quarterback, right, to match up against a supposedly great defense that Dallas had. And they just went out there and they punched them in the mouth. That's what they did. They punched them in the mouth. And now you're seeing a lot of people start to collectively agree that this 49ers team is the top of the NFL right now. And, you know, I don't know if it says – I think that they just meet, might be that much better than Dallas, but that doesn't mean Dallas is bad. Like, I mean, we've seen Dallas dominate teams. Yeah, it's Mac Jones, Patriots, Zach Wilson's Jets, but it's still the National Football League that's hard to do. So I just think this more shows just the talent and the depth and the nastiness of the 49ers more than it says anything about the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I agree. I think it says more about how good of a football team the 49ers have. I mean, it's one of the deepest teams I think I've ever seen. Um, I agree. I think I wouldn't say they're the top of the NFL. I definitely think they're top of the NFC, though. I think they're the best team in the NFC. Um, we already know about the Cowboys. We know how they are. We know that Dak Prescott is not going to be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He's not going to be an NFC championship winning quarterback. That's just how it is. I mean, three picks looked pretty awful. Bad picks. Bad picks. Very bad picks. And you cannot, as good as the Cowboys defense is, you cannot rely on them that much against a, an offense that San Francisco, it doesn't matter who they're playing, they're going to score. It doesn't matter who. So, honestly, it just shows the dominance of the 49ers. I think they are definite Super Bowl contenders. The 49ers are a legitimately really good team. I mean, except for them losing in the playoff game when quarterback went to the hospital. The last time, time they lost was last November, the week after they got Chris McCaffrey. So since one week after having him, and they got dominated by Kansas City that game. Mm. They have not lost since, of course, unless their quarterback goes to the infirmary. Um, yeah, the 49ers are really good. I was actually surprised. I thought both of y'all were going to say, you know, down on Dallas today. But honestly, for me, I think San Francisco has created a gap because I actually can't confidently say, like, they're just not the best team in the entire league. I mean, I don't think there's a team in the AFC who, I mean, they can lose any given Sunday, of course. But San Francisco, I think, is definitely – they've just showed it. They're head and shoulders above Dallas. And for me, I still think Dallas can beat a Philadelphia. And I'd have both Seattle and Detroit in that four and five. Like, all of those teams are in the top five contending. 
because the depth just isn't as there in the NFC. But, Ryan, I do want to ask you this because you are a Seattle fan. Your arrival of the 49ers, are you – I just just real quickly, are you are you afraid of the 49ers now or even more so than you were last week? Mm, yeah, a little bit because what – Usually when the 49ers beat us, which they usually don't, but they swept us last year, it was because, you know, that D-line was just destroying us. It's a good one. But, I mean, that offense just looks flawless, truthfully. And, like, and when you have that many playmakers on the, on the field, you don't need an elite quarterback to, to run that offense as highly as Brock Purdy does because Brock Purdy's not elite. But the, the fact that they're able to do that against that defense with a mid-quarterback, it, it's, it's scary. And it's scary for me, but – I feel better about matching up against the 49ers than, say, another top NFC team that's not in the division simply because we see them so often. We've seen Kyle Shanahan for so long, you know, all these guys. We know it in and out. So those games are going to be closer than this. Will be, I'll tell you that right now. Even though I think Dallas is better than Seattle, those games will be closer. So a little scared, but still kind of confident. I, I hear what you mean because this is how it goes with division rivals. I mean, you still look, you got their number. If you don't mind, if you guys could just kind of share the mic real quick, because I want to I want to do a little experiment because I'm hearing a lot of, you know, the team is good, but it's Brock Purdy this, Brock Purdy that. And Ryland, you've come across as sometimes as a Brock Purdy hater. So I just want to do a little exercise. Okay. We're just going to quick yes or no. Okay. Obviously, not necessarily in order, but you'll get the idea. Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Joe Burrow. Yes. Trevor Lawrence. Yes. Josh Allen. Yes. Lamar. Yes. Justin Herbert. Yes. After that, um, Jared Goff. Yes. Really? Yes. Already. How about Geno Smith? Yes. Really? Yes. Y'all would both take Geno Smith over Brock. Yes. I would. Brock, so did n- neither of y'all thought Brock Purdy, he, he looked pretty great on Sunday. He, he still never lost Ryland. I mean, well, guys are wide open. <laughs> I mean, like, okay. it, all, all it is, it's not, you're not having to critically think. You just look for the guy who's open, and they're always open. Brandon Ayuk, and Brandon Ayuk looks like a top five wide receiver right now. So so the Dallas defense, I mean, I thought this was the top three defense coming in, top five. Well, when you have Micah Parsons, DeMarcus Lawrence disappear, thanks to Trent Williams and, and that O-line, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you can make those okay. guys disappear, you're going to win the game. How about Dak Prescott? <laughs> <laughs> you're in the line. Uh, what what no. is it? I need to hear it. No. So you'd rather have Brock Purdy? Yes. I, I'll take Brock Purdy over Dak. Yeah. I mean, Dak just – he. Li- it's just, I've never seen a player on that team just look so unconfident in himself outside of pressers. Like when you're in that game and you look at him, there's no confidence radi- radiating out of him. He doesn't look like he is in command of the game like your star quarterback should be. It's just none of that. And you see that with Brock Purdy, admittedly. He looks like he's having fun and he knows what he's doing. So do you guys think that Justin Fields or Mac Jones could go on the 49ers? They could have done the same thing, truthfully. If the 49ers drafted Justin Fields, Justin Fields would have won an MVP by now. Wow. I mean, I was actually a big advocate for that, by the way, because and it never I've brought this up before and it's still we don't have answers. Like, I don't know why it was a guaranteed. OK, Trevor Lawrence won, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, Zach Wilson. Zach Trey Wilson, too. Nobody knows why. <laughs> and then obviously, you know, the trade that the 49ers did and having field slip to 11, I want to say whatever. So you, do you think um, like Matt Stafford, if you were on the 49ers right now? Really? They would have went they would have went back to back last year and this year if they had Matt Stafford. They made that trade for them instead of the Rams. Yeah. Okay. So we still have some Brock Purdy doubters in here. It'll be okay. <laughs> we'll come back to this in a few weeks. All right, Connor. Sorry, but now we're going to college football. Oh, we're going to what was supposed to be and it kind of lived up to it. it. It did. The best college football game this last weekend, the Red River Rivalry. Of course, Texas riding in hot. They were coming in as the three seed and you know, number twelve Oklahoma, who upset the Longhorns. And, you know, of course, both big Texas brands lost this weekend. The world's going crazy. And everyone's overreacting. So, Connor, I want to start with you. This is your team. I want to, I want to hear your pity this afternoon. Are the Longhorns' playoff hopes over? No, I don't think they are. I think, honestly, uh, very it, – it was a tough loss. I don't – I'm not overreacting to it as much as other people. I said if they were going to lose to any team, they were going to lose to Oklahoma because I knew, like, looking at Oklahoma's offense, Dylan Gabriel, they look pretty legit. They look pretty good, underrated team. Um, Dylan Gabriel is, in my opinion, I wouldn't say he's better than Caleb Williams, but he's pretty close. I'm just going to say that right now. I'm just going to – I don't know what it's about him. He's he's dang good. He's not as – I said he's not as good, but he's pretty close. Um 
the biggest thing that I just took away, I know, see, I know y'all are laughing. It's like Brock Purdy. I know y'all are laughing. But honestly, I don't think it's over. I think, honestly, if Texas wins out, I think there's a chance of some teams, you know, lose. Um, they win the Big 12. But it was just a tough loss. But I'm not overreacting. I still think Texas has a chance to make the CFP, but it would, at the max, it would be a four seed. They're not getting to the three seed for sure. Yeah, well, the thing that's so sad about this loss for Texas is that, like, if you win this game, like, you know, you have a good chance. You control your own destiny, right? Now they're going to need some help if they want to get into it. That's what's so unfortunate for Texas because I was a big Texas believer, even though I don't like Texas. They were the most proven team to me up until last Saturday. But now you're going to need some help to get in the college football playoffs, which is a shame because this is a good team that they have in Texas. And Dylan Gabriel, he's good, right? He's the He's good. I don't know. Caleb Williams team is a little crazy. I don't even I would say right now it's Caleb Williams, uh Michael Penix, and then uh Shader Sanders are my top three quarterbacks. Really? But yes. No Drake May? Well, okay, wait. <laughs> Drake I got May. You. Anyway. But yeah, yes. Uh it's an unfortunate loss. I don't think it, it, it could have gone either way, really. I don't think it says much about Texas as their team. I think they're still really good. I just think that now they it's gonna need some help to get in the playoffs. But honestly, that's why we love college football, because that's how it always works, especially in this four-team playoff era. I mean, all these teams are going to lose this weekend. Who knows? One of us might bring it up later. Washington, Oregon play. Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State play each other like a triangle. I mean, all these teams that are ranked ahead of them, they all play each other. So, no, their playoff hopes aren't over. However, I mean, that is a weak conference. So, like you said, I mean, whoever won that game, I was pretty confident would go on. But thankfully for the Big 12, they don't have those stupid divisions like the SEC and the Big Ten have where all the best teams are in the same darn division. <laughs> uh, so if UT and Oklahoma wins out, they could rematch. And if Oklahoma avenges their only loss and, who knows, maybe in dominant fashion, I actually can see them be any seed because I still don't trust really anybody. I mean, I think one through ten is wide open. I mean, so it's completely wide open, especially if Georgia loses and everyone in the Big Ten beats each other, but they can't avenge their loss and their conference championship like Texas will be able to. I don't know. There's a lot that can still happen in these next several weeks. Uh, before we move on, I just I just want to ask y'all, especially Connor, because, I mean, these are both his teams, which loss scares you the most? Hmm. I think the manner in which the Cowboys lost scares me the most. I would have to say the Cowboys just because, I, I mean, I kind of figured it would be close. I kind of I was leaning towards maybe they would lose, and I was like, okay, you know, San Francisco, good team. I didn't think they were going to get dominated like that. It was just flat out embarrassing, pretty much. Um, <laughs> it was in the first half. It was close. I won't lie. It was like I think it's like twenty one fourteen at one point. It was a close game, but then when you turn over the ball, you leave the defense out there the whole time. It's just, they're going to get overworked. So I just Dak. It's just concerning me. Mm -hmm. Like, he does every Cowboys fan. I know that. So, mm -hmm. I definitely the Cowboys. I think Texas will, will be fine. Yeah, it's the Cowboys because you're supposed to be a contender, and then you play another contender, and you just get absolutely destroyed, and your quarterback looks like he doesn't belong there. So, that's concerning. Although, I do think they'll be fine. I do think the next time they play, if they play again, it'll be closer. Uh, right now, it's the more concerning one is Cowboys loss. I don't know. I think that's finally something we can kind of slightly disagree on today. I think it's worse for Texas just because of structure. Just mm. because now with the four team playoff, I mean, so now they have they're in the position where they have to make a case to get in. I mean, I I still think we're all pretty confident Cowboys are going to make the playoffs, and probably I mean if they're the five seed or whomever they play that terrible four seed who's going to be the NFC South champ. So all of a sudden, they're already in the divisional round. We already thought their ceiling was probably, what, NFC Championship game and mm. a hop, skip it a bounce. They might end up there. So I, I, I don't know. They're, they still have everything in front of them. And they, I mean, they have a lot more to figure out, obviously. But Texas, their path, I think, might be a little tougher. All right, so let's stay here in college football. Of course, we got to give our reactions to the AP poll, which came out a few days ago. Again, God, second or third straight week, we're not – too much happened. Uh, obviously, deservingly so, teams lost, teams moved up. Um, so I just want to get y'all's reactions. Look at the AP poll. Uh, Rylan, what do you see? What do you like? What do you hate? Um, I like FSU back in top four. They're my team. They're my natty pick. So that, that's starting to line up. 
but I mean, really, I mean, Oklahoma moved up deservingly. Texas moved down deservingly. Um, I think it's so funny. USC wins every week, and they just keep dropping. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the funniest thing. And Louisville up to fourteen. That's low. Louisville crazy, but everything else about adds up. Notre Dame down to twenty one. It's hilarious. Why is LSU still ranked? Who knows. <laughs> But yeah, that's it. It's a SEC bias, man. They're a two win <laughs> team or two loss team, and they're out there. Insane. Um, yeah, the top four is honestly fine with me. Uh, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State. As much as it pains me to say, I'm fine with Oklahoma being at five because they beat us. Um, I'm honestly really relieved that Texas didn't get dropped down further than nine. I think that's honestly okay. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Louisville is the biggest surprise for me. I cannot believe they jumped up 11 spots. That's insane. I mean, they beat Notre Dame, right? That's what they beat. Yeah, um, stomped them. Actually. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. Uh, 11, 11, 11 spots. Ohio State just can't catch a break. I, I hate to tie it back to my team. But what I, were you saying, Connor? No, I know. I know it. Um, yeah, I think everything else is pretty good, apart from, all, obviously, LSU. I don't know why they're even ranked if they have two losses, but that's just SEC. So. Yeah, and we're not going to talk about it too much. We're not going to talk about past college football games. But, like, when Ohio State played Maryland, who was 5-0, <laughs> and o, and they weren't ranked, but a 3-2 and two LSU was, that Maryland team, again, not going to go too much into it, but that team was actually pretty good. They were 5-0. and o, They lost to the number three team in the country. Why are they not ranked? I don't know. I don't have a problem with really anything on the list, except – I go all the way down, scroll and scroll and scroll. And you know who I still see hanging on by a thread <laughs> after making maybe the worst coaching decision ever in college football history is Mario Cristobal and the Miami Hurricanes are still ranked, hanging in there barely on, at spot number 25. Did y'all watch that ending, by the way, or hear about what happened? Uh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that is embarrassing. <laughs> if, I, I don't know why they're still ranked, Had Ryland. Like, what were your thoughts on that game? Or well, that that series or play specifically, it just doesn't make any sense. Like you, the game is over. Just why would you even risk it? Okay, and that not only that, how do you drop the ball right there? I mean, and then they have to, and then they have to go like seventy four yards down the field, and then they give that up. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, have y'all ever seen a worse blunder? Like I'm just trying to think. I don't know because mm. that coaching decision is bad. Like we've obviously obviously seen teams go. I don't know if y'all remember, but last year in the NFL when uh, the Bills were playing the Vikings. And the Bills got the ball back, but they fumbled on yeah, the one yard yeah, lines. Yeah. That might be up there, but even then, the game wasn't over. Like this well, game could have been over. I could, I could, I could go back a couple years. There's just one team that was about to win the Super Bowl on the goal line. Uh, okay. uh, they made a coaching, coaching blunder. I don't know what team it was, but <clears throat> oh, man. that's that's up there for sure. Are we going down that route? Because I got some, <laughs> I got some coaching blunders that we could talk about. <laughs> okay, uh, stay in college football before we move back on to the NFL. Another new week coming in, in front of us. A couple good big games. Um, I'll go first. My favorite game this weekend will be the Notre Dame-USC game. Kind of touched on it. Notre Dame just lost. Now all of a sudden, I'm like, great. There goes our best win of the season. Um, looks really not as cool now. I mean, who knows? Unless Louisville's good and they keep, you know, they keep doing what they're doing. Now it's a pretty great win. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I'm, we're obviously pretty skeptical, at least for the defense of uh, – the USC. Now we all of a sudden we have someone who doesn't think Caleb Williams is that good, or at least <laughs> you know, who knows. Uh, so that game will definitely show a lot, especially since both Washington and Oregon are playing, and that'll be a great game as well. But one of them obviously are losing, and if USC, you know, if they keep winning, even though we're all hating on their defense, right. hating on, pointing out all these flaws, if they just keep winning. You know, they control their own destiny. So for me, my game of the week will be Notre Dame USC, and have USC unfortunately winning by 10 points. Well, mine's going to be an easy pick for me. It's Washington, Oregon. And I actually think that Washington will go out there and get a statement win, a win by a couple possessions over Oregon because I believe in uh, Michael Penix that much. I love their wide receiver core. I just love everything about the team that I'm going to be watching that one for sure. So yeah, Washington over Oregon. I'm going to be a little different from y'all. I see a, I see a game over in the old Big Ten Conference. Oh, no. This team loves to pull off an upset. Uh -oh. Ohio State versus Purdue. Oh, Lord. I smell a potential upset here. I think they're at, yeah, they're at Purdue. Yeah. The Boilermakers, you know how they are. They love to 
Love to cause the, the little stir of the pot. And he beat football. us one freaking time. <laughs> well, uh, you, and you know what? That's not a bad pick, Connor. I mean, it's it's not going to end well. <laughs> but that, I still have a very sour taste in my mouth from that game. So not a bad pick. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think, honestly, out of all the games, I think that has the best chance of an upset. I'm just being honest with you. I just I don't know what it is about Purdue. I just feel like. I just got a feeling, man. Well, Connor, if you're correct, this will be our last podcast because <laughs> you will never see me again. Okay, NFL time. There's a lot of teams, including the Cowboys, including my Bengals, who are, you know, disappointing starts of the season and they got to get back on the track. A lot of different other teams who, you know, face must-win scenarios. So, Connor, you still have that mic in your hand. Who in the NFL faces a must-win this weekend? I'm going to go with my Cowboys because they're playing the Chargers. I think this is going to be a barn burner, man. I, I'm scared for the Cowboys defense against that offense. Justin Herbert helps out my fantasy team a lot. I'd be swinging that rock all over the place. I think it's a good test for him, you know, out of conference game, see how it goes. I think it's really a must win for the Cowboys. If the Cowboys don't win, I think they may still make the playoffs, but I – I think the confidence is just going to be gone. Like, I don't know what it is. So, I think for me, Cowboys Chargers must win for the Cowboys. I actually didn't go the Bears over the Vikings. Uh-huh. They, they, that's a must win for them, right? This isn't necessarily a rebuilding Bears team. This is what they added pieces. They, lot, they spent a lot of money in free agency. They had a top 10 draft pick. This is supposed to be the year they start beating some of these teams that a bad team wouldn't normally beat. And that hasn't happened yet. So now you're coming against a team, uh, Minnesota, that was a playoff team last year, obviously not having the same amount of success. Jefferson on IR. What you want to see is Justin Fields have a good game passing and securing a win, which I think on the road, let me check. I'm not sure. No, it's at home. So even more of a reason they need to win that game. You got to you gotta beat the bad teams if you want to prove that you're more than a bad team, which right now they're a bad team, so you're trying to, you know. Yeah, that's my pick, Bears over right. That's a good pick. I like that. You know, no one's really going to talk about that. We'll see because, because you're right. I, I really hope the Bears win. Really love my man, Justin Fields, see what happens. Um, I kind of have two picks, not really, because my number one is the Bengals. Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to talk about it just because I think they're actually going to lose, like legitimately. I do think the Seahawks are going to win. I mean, T. Higgins, I don't even think he's going to play. And I think those I, – I believe in both corners on the Seahawks. So, I think they're going to double Jamar. And, you know, I don't think that game will – So that, it's, it's a must win for the Bengals. They're just not going to win it. So, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> uh, so, my real pick is the Cowboys and Chargers. That is a big game. And also, you know what I saw when reading the news this morning? Former offensive coordinator Kellen Moore in L.A. has, and I quote, an inside track on the Dallas offense this week. Obviously, that's – I mean, he was just there, so that's an obvious statement. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think – I think Kellen Moore is more smart. I know a lot of Cowboy fans were hating on him. Connor, were you one of those? Okay, so you, you were a believer. Okay. I Yeah, I think he's a smart guy, and I think if you're going to get the Cowboys, this is their lowest. I mean, they're going to come out swinging because they know they cannot lose. Mm-hmm. They lose – I've heard they've only lost a back-to-back once in the McCarthy era – few years ago and one of those two games was against the Chiefs. So this would be a really rare territory if they lose twice. And it'd also be three times in four weeks. And it's Monday night football. So everyone's gonna see it of course. It's gonna be a good game. And the reason I pick is because I think the Cowboys win. And I'm hoping they win because I want the Chargers to lose. Uh, of course AFC opponent. Okay. We're doing pretty good today guys. Just over under a half hour. It kind of helps that we only have three of us here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's finish this off by talking about UTSA, UAB. Get a little brief take of what's to come this Saturday. I'm actually pretty excited for this game. I mean, 7 p.m., Saturday night in the Alamo Dome. A, you know, very – this is a familiar opponent. We've had some tough battles in the past. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great game. Rylan, I'm going to start with you. You're our guy. You'll be in the press box. How do you see this game going on Saturday night? This one is going to be a high-scoring one for sure. Because, I mean, both offenses uh, have shown the ability to score a lot of points. And UTSA's defense has shown the ability to give up a lot of points. So uh, <laughs> I just think it's going to be one of those high scoring, everybody standing up with, with a minute left in the fourth quarter. And, oh, you know, kind of like that 2021 game where it was one of the greatest endings in UTSA history. Um, I predict that you know, it'll be another Frank Harris great game. You know, you start in, 
incorporating uh, Devin McCoon more. So you get that passing game going up. You get the O line building some cohesion, and um, but I don't think the defense will be able to hang with the the UAB offense. So it's gonna be high scoring one um, in a packed Alamo Dome uh, Saturday night, seven p.m. Everybody's gonna be there. It's gonna be great. So, man, this game is honestly becoming more of a rivalry than Texas State because yeah. just because of the the quality of games we're having. I mean, that's not a bad take. I was at the 2021 game, obviously, when Cardenas caught that touchdown pass. I think it's the greatest ending in UTSA history. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, how loud that place was. And last year's game was crazy, too, in, in Birmingham. So it's always going to be a close game against these guys. You know they want to beat us. They really do. Um, they're a, a very disciplined team. They've had a very tough – I mean, they played Georgia. They played Tulane. They've had a pretty tough, like, run of games so far. Um so they're going to want to try and come in the Alamo Dome and beat us. So it's going to be close, but I think UTSA pulls it out. But it's going to be, like he said, very, very high scoring. Neither of y'all have a score prediction? Mm-mm. Neither of y'all? Yeah, yeah. Also, come on, football guy. Come on, insider. Oh, man. Uh, I'm going to go – yeah. I'm going to go 35-28 UTSA. Okay. And we're not far off then. I actually have UTSA slightly winning the game, 31-27. High scoring but close. I We all envision the same thing, and maybe it's because we've seen it happen the last several years. Close. Everyone's on their feet with a minute left. Thankfully, the ball's always been in Frank Harris's hands. We've always got the job done. By the way, that game in 2021, were both of y'all there? How was that, Lamar? <laughs> I, was, I wasn't there either. I was too busy, upset that Ohio State lost to Michigan, and they weren't <laughs> going to their conference championships. Or, yeah, so I was – very i did not want to be there uh before we get out of here i just got to say to the audience i really hope that you know connor's teams come back this week because y'all can't see it but he's in here wearing a texas ranger shirt D- ditch the cowboys <laughs> ditch the longhorns obviously he's still supporting but now he's only publicly repping the rangers who did win and are now going to the alcs yeah, right yeah. okay that'll be great that'll happen this sunday maybe next week we'll get some baseball talk on there maybe connor will have something happy to talk about Mm. that's all we got today just over half an hour thank you guys for listening we'll be back here next week talking about all of this weekend's games see you then